I am not as nasty as racism, fraud, conflict of interest, homophobia, sexual assault, transphobia, white supremacy, misogyny. Good evening. Uh, thank you guys for coming. I know our fish, first official press briefing is going to be on Monday, but I wanted to give you a few updates on the president's activities. Uh, but before I get to the news of the day, I think I'd like to discuss a little bit of the coverage of the past 24 hours. Yesterday, at a time when our nation and the world was watching the peaceful transition of power, and as the president said, the transition in the balance of power from Washington to the citizens of the United States, member, some members of the media were engaged in deliberately false reporting. For all the talk about the proper use of Twitter, two instances yesterday stand out. One was a particularly egregious example in which a reporter falsely tweeted out that the bust of Martin Luther King Jr. had been removed from the Oval Office. After it was pointed out that this was just plain wrong, the reporter casually reported and tweeted out and tried to claim that a Secret Service must, agent must have just been standing in front of it. This was irresponsible and reckless. Secondly, photographs of the inaugural proceedings were intentionally framed in a way in one particular tweet to minimize the enormous support that had gathered on the National Mall. This was the first time in our nation's history that floor coverings have been used to protect the grass in the mall. That had the effect of highlighting any areas where people were not standing, while in years past, the grass eliminated this visual. This was also the first time that fencing and magnetometers went as far back on the wall, preventing hundreds of thousands of people from being able to access the mall as quickly as they had in inaugurations past. Inaccurate numbers involving crowd size were also tweeted. No one had numbers because the National Park Service, which controls the National Mall, does not put any out. By the way, this applies to any attempts to try to count the number of protesters today in the same fashion. We do know a few things, so let's go through the facts. We know that from the platform where the president was sworn into 4th Street holds about 250,000 people. From 4th Street to the media tent is about another 220,000. And from the media tent to the Washington Monument, another, another 250,000 people. All of this space was full when the president took the oath of office. We know that 420,000 people used the DC Metro public transit yesterday, which actually compares to 317,000 that used it for President Obama's last inaugural. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period, both in person and around the globe. Even the New York Times printed a, photo a photograph showing the, that a, a misrepresentation of the crowd in the original tweet in their paper, which showed the full extent of the support, depth, and crowd and intensity that existed. These attempts to lessen the enthusiasm of the inauguration are shameful and wrong. The president was also at the central, as you know, the president was at the Central Intelligence Agency today and greeted by a raucous overflow crowd of some 400 plus CIA employees. There were over a thousand requests to attend, prompting the president to note that he'll have to come back to greet the rest. The employees were ecstatic that he's the new commander in chief and he delivered them in a powerful and important message. He told them he has their back and they were grateful for that. They gave him a five minute standing ovation at the end in a display of their patriotism and their enthusiasm for his presidency. I'd also note that it's a shame that the CIA didn't have a CIA director to be with him today when he visited because the Democrats have chosen, Senate Democrats are stalling the nomination of Mike Pompeo and playing politics with national security. That's what you guys should be writing and covering. That this, instead of sowing division about tweets and, and false narratives, the president is committed to unifying our country and that was the focus of his inaugural address. This kind of dishonesty in the media, the challenging that bringing about our nation together is making it more difficult. There's been a lot of talk in the media about the responsibility to hold Donald Trump accountable. And I'm here to tell you that it goes two ways. We're gonna hold the press accountable as well. The American people deserve and as long uh, deserve better, and as long as he serves as the messenger for this incredible movement, he will take his message directly to the American people where his focus will always be. And with that, a few other updates from the day. The president had a constructive conversation with Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada about strengthening the relationship between our two nations. They also discussed setting up additional meetings in the days to come, which we will follow up on. 
Uh, he also spoke to Prime Minister ne uh, Pena Nieto of Mexico and talked about a visit uh, on trade, immigration, and security that will occur on the 31st. The President has, will welcome his first foreign leader this Thursday when the United Kingdom's Theresa May will come uh, to Washington on Friday. On uh, tomorrow, the President will oversee his assistance to the President being sworn in. He will then, uh, the staff will then have an ethics briefing and be uh, a briefing on the proper use and handling of classified information. Um, further updates uh, as far as what he will do. Oh, and then in the evening he will have a reception for law enforcement and first responders that helped uh, support the inauguration. Thank you guys for being here tonight. I will see you on Monday. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer in the briefing room with uh, several statements but uh, not responding to any questions from reporters.